My name is Matt Cohen. I'm the executive director of Northstone Organics Cooperative. We're a medical cannabis co-op based in Mendocino County uh, that delivers uh, our cannabis farm direct to our patient base in nine Barry counties. So this is a light deprivation greenhouse. What we have here is 21 varieties of medical cannabis strain. So they just started flowering. Um, they'll probably grow another foot, foot and a half up into this netting. This is an outdoor growing area at Northstone Organics. Uh, it's all fenced in and secure. We have uh, cameras in all four corners, and but we're going to mow this all down. The chickens are out here throughout the winter, eating up the weed seeds, fertilizing. The natural light cycles, the larger outdoor crop, will finish in about October 15th, something like that. At that point, everything is then harvested and then put into a drying facility that's environmentally controlled and the moisture is taken out and it's cured over like a two or three week period of time. They just place orders online, but they're, they're classified as telephone orders and we package them up and we knock it off the inventory. You know, it's like the vegetable uh, model CSA, Community Sustainable Agriculture, where uh, folks in the city will buy into a farm in the country and share the the produce that comes off of that farm. And we had basically a similar concept and the benefit is you know where your food comes from, you know where your medicine comes from. I've always been fascinated with with the plant and and, uh, and farming and uh, believed in medical cannabis and I've always had close relationships with a lot of people that needed the medicine and provided it for them. And the laws have just been evolving over since 1996 when Prop 215 passed. Hey, Justin's back. Hey, come on up. Um, there's patients that aren't mobile. There's patients that don't like to go to dispensaries. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why you choose a farm direct because you know the source. You're getting it for a farm direct price and uh, it's delivered to your door. Police say a teen suspect is dead and two victims seriously injured when gunfire broke out during an invasion robbery at this Northern California home. One of the suspects shot the female a resident and it's unknown how the 15-year-old male was shot if the homeowner armed himself with a handgun or actually wrestled away one of the handguns from the uh, assailant. Police say they think they know what the three teens who broke into the home were looking for. And they found uh, a marijuana grow inside the residence. How many plants do you have? Uh, we haven't counted the, the plants, but there were two rooms that had marijuana plants in them. Some neighbors say these kinds of shootings might not happen if marijuana was legal. Anytime you create a black market for something, then you're going to have more crime. You know what I mean? Because if it was legal, these guys probably wouldn't be growing in their house. Police arrested a 17-year-old and are still looking for a third suspect. Two toddlers who were in the home at the time of the shooting were not injured. Haven Daily, The Associated Press, Antioch, California. Hello and welcome to the MPP Insider. I'm Mike Mino. Uh, I'd like to first thank everybody who left us comments about our new format. As you can tell from the wall behind me, we've slowed down our graphics a little bit. Hope you guys like that better, and please keep the comments coming. On today's episode, we're going to discuss marijuana in the news. We're going to take a look at marijuana by the numbers, and we're also going to take the drug czar to school. Uh, but first up, let's look at marijuana in the news. In a somewhat surprising sign of progress in the world of marijuana policy reform this week, perhaps the harshest opponent of sensible marijuana law is the United States Congress. Republican Representative Mark Souter of Indiana announced his resignation amid revelations that he's had an affair with a part-time staffer. Among other egregious acts, Representative Souter authored the aid elimination penalty in the Higher Education Act, which for more than a decade has deprived more than 200,000 students of financial aid for college, all for having drug violations. 
Also in Washington, D.C. this week, Mexican President Felipe Calderon met with U.S. President Barack Obama. All throughout the media, there's been criticism of both U.S. and Mexican drug policy, and there was a lot of positive coverage this week about the need to renew the debate over U.S. drug policy in regards to Mexico. Finally, in Montana, there were some egregious acts of essentially terrorism, uh, acts of violence committed against participants in Montana's uh, booming medical marijuana program, including two medical marijuana clinics that were firebombed. Really scary stuff, and it's causing advocates and lawmakers in Montana to call for statewide regulation of that state's medical marijuana program. Next up, let's take a look at marijuana by the numbers. This week's number, 49. That was a crucial stat in two polls released this week. The first was in Colorado, where 49% of likely voters said they would support efforts to tax and regulate marijuana, with additional 13% undecided. Also in California, which is preparing for a November ballot initiative to end marijuana prohibition in the state, 49% of respondents said they believe marijuana should be legal, while 48% believe it should not be. So that's a sign of how far we need to go to pass this ballot initiative in November. Next up, we're going to bring you a new segment that we like to call Schooling the Drug Czar. U.S. Drug Czar Gil Kurlikowski has stated on numerous occasions that his vocabulary does not include the word legalization. Well, this week we also found out that he might not be too clear on the definition of another important word, prohibition. In an online video interview with the Washington Post, Director Kurlikowski said the Obama administration is, quote, not exploring prohibition, which is somewhat mind-boggling seeing as how Director Kurlikowski is the chief overseer of one of the longest standing prohibitions in American history, that against marijuana. It's also telling that a strategy report just released by his office once again overstated the harms caused by marijuana while making no reference whatsoever to the colossal failure and damage incurred on this country by marijuana prohibition. That's going to do it for us here on the MPP Insider. Once again, I am Mike Mino. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you next time. to save a life, especially the life of your children. Is there anything you wouldn't do to keep them alive? The mom in that video, Miko, is here with us today. And, you know, Miko, you've been in the middle of a media firestorm and obviously become such a proponent for anything that will help your son. What has been the hardest part in all of this for you? I've opened the door to a whole new uh, alternative treatment that has been successful with my son. Miko, uh, in addition to Joey doubling his weight uh, because of this treatment, you also noticed some other positive changes? Joey has had an awakening, and, I, and that is truly um, what has happened to my son. Um, I lost him at 16 months. He was saying, Mom, I feel like I have my son back. I have the son that I lost at 16 months that was saying, Mom. As a mother, and I'm a mother and a doctor, we would do absolutely anything for our children and what you've done for your child and seeing this awakening is just, I, I think going the extra mile is just fantastic. I really do. I think any mom with a child with autism, to see their child awaken like that, that's, that's, yeah. that's the number one goal, to see your child awaken. Yeah, my awesome. son is now making sounds. He is mimicking my one-year-old. He has a personality. It's almost like I've given birth twice to, to Joey. And when we